What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook and welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. In this video, I'll be building this farmhouse style buffet cabinet. This is a great project for a relative beginner since you won't need a ton of tools. A table saw, miter saw, pocket hole jig, and drill are the only tools you'll need to complete this piece. And you can even break down these pieces with a circular saw if you don't have a table saw or miter saw. So let's get started. First, I assembled the top of the cabinet. The top is constructed from two pieces of 1x8 material and one piece of 1x4 material. I cut some biscuit slots to help with alignment, a totally optional step, and then glued the pieces together into a panel. While the top panel dried, I continued breaking down the other pieces for the project. I have plans available for this buffet cabinet on my website with more detailed measurements, a sketchup file, a cut list, and cutting diagrams, and check the video description for a link if you're interested. This piece is built from one sheet of three quarter inch and one sheet of quarter inch pure bond plywood and various dimensional lumber, including two by fours, one by fours, one by sixes, and one by eights. And let's take a minute to talk about this video's sponsor, Pure Bond Plywood. Pure Bond is formaldehyde free hardwood plywood that's professional grade and domestically made. I use Pure Bond for all of my interior plywood projects and absolutely love the quality and consistency. If you'd like to purchase Pure Bond for your next project, it's available exclusively at the Home Depot and at homedepot.com, and you can use the link in the video description below to learn more. I broke down my pieces on the miter saw and table saw. Again, you could use a circular saw here if you don't have access to these tools. The cabinet uses pocket hole joinery, which is a quick, efficient way to put together cabinets. You can pick up a pocket hole jig for as cheap as about 20 bucks at the local home center. I drilled the pocket holes and then began assembling the structure. The legs are made up of 2x2s and are joined by 1x2 rails. I then added a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood to make up the panel structure of the sides. This is held into place using pocket screws and glue. Next I attach the front and back frame pieces to the sides. The front frame is made up of 2x2s and the rear frame is made up of 2x4s. I made sure to orient my pocket holes facing the rear on the back frame and the bottom on the front frame, and this way no pocket holes will be visible in the final piece. The face frame pieces include a center vertical 2x2 and horizontal 1x2s. These are also attached with pocket screws. The bottom of the cabinet is made up of 3 quarter inch plywood, and again I used pocket screws to install it. Make sure to space the bottom evenly to make sure it's level inside the cabinet. Next, I glued up two pieces of 3 quarter inch plywood to make up the center panel. The two panels glued together fill in the space in the center of the cabinet, which allowed me to use off-the-shelf standard drawer slides. I could have cut spacers for the drawer slides to fill in the extra space, but I found it easier just to double up the center plywood panel. I needed to cut notches in the center panel to fit around the frame, but made a little bit of an error here. I needed to cut notches on the top and bottom corners of the front of the panel, but instead cut notches on both of the top corners. Luckily this little error won't be seen on the final piece since the drawers will cover that area. This center panel is also attached with pocket screws. I also drilled one pocket hole on each side of the center panel along the top. I'll use those holes to attach the top later. You don't need to drill pocket holes on the back edge of the center panel. Next I cut some shallow grooves on the door panels which are made of quarter inch plywood. This gives the doors a paneled look without having to use actual wood panels. I also evidently lost some footage of assembling the rails and styles of the door frame, but they were just assembled with more pocket screws. I attached the quarter inch plywood panel to the back of the rails and styles using three quarter inch brad nails and glue. Next I rounded over almost every edge of the piece with an eighth inch radius roundover bit. If you don't have a router, you could just as easily break the edges with sandpaper. I trimmed the edge of the top square at the miter saw, rounded over the edges, then spent some time sanding it to 180 grit. I went from 80 to 120 to 180 grit, and I did the same for the rest of the pieces of the project. I applied a water-based stain from General Finishes next. This is the espresso color. It went on a little darker than I expected, even after doing a few test pieces. This wasn't a huge deal though because I was already planning to distress the piece after staining to match what my friend who I'm building this piece for wanted. To distress the piece, I used 320 grit sandpaper on my random orbit sander. I made sure to hit the corners and edges of the pieces a little extra to make the wear and tear look more authentic. I was surprised at how easy this process was and I think it really gave the final piece a nicely distressed look. 
The 320 grit sandpaper also helped to smooth out the surface since the water-based stain raised the grain a little bit. Next, it was time to apply finish. First, I sprayed on two coats of General Finish's sanding sealer with my HVLP system. This seals the stain nicely and allows you to sand to an extremely smooth finish before applying your actual top coat. After sanding the sanding sealer with 320 grit sandpaper, I applied three coats of General Finish's high performance top coat, sanding in between coats. I wanted the shelves on the cabinet to be adjustable, so I whipped up a quick shelf pin jig at my drill press. This fence system on my drill press made it super simple. I just drilled a quarter inch hole, spaced every inch in a piece of scrap plywood. To drill the shelf pin holes in the piece, I used a quarter inch drill bit with a depth stop set to the depth of the pins. And I'm really glad I didn't waste 30 bucks buying one of these jigs, since this only took me about 10 minutes to make and I can use it again in future projects. Next, I installed the drawer slides. I marked in three quarters of an inch to account for the drawer fronts and then mounted the slides. I used a piece of scrap plywood cut to length as a support for the slides. This is extremely helpful and helps to make sure your slides are spaced evenly. These are bottom mount slides that I picked up from the home center and I'll have links to similar slides in the video description and build article. I installed the drawer fronts using this playing card trick I learned from William Walker. Definitely check out his channel if you don't already subscribe to him. The playing cards act as spacers so you can precisely set your reveal before attaching the drawer fronts. I attached the drawer fronts using a few inch and a quarter screws from the inside of the drawer. Next, I installed the knob in the center of the drawer front. I needed to recess the bolt slightly to give it enough length to reach the knob and just use a Forstner bit to do this. I mounted the hinges and hung the doors using the same playing card trick again. These were a little tricky since these screws were so tiny, but I eventually made it work. I also installed a magnetic catch to keep the doors in place when closed. I installed the knobs on the doors in the same manner as on the drawers. After the hardware was installed, it was time to attach the top. I drilled holes through the top frame to accept a few different sizes of screws. I made sure to drill these holes slightly oversized to allow for wood movement. The holes on the front of the frame had to be drilled in an angle so that the screws could be installed around the face frame. The center portion of the top is attached using the pocket holes I drilled earlier in the center and side plywood panels. This will give the top a solid center point to move outward from. Finally, I attached the back panel, which is made up of quarter inch plywood, and added my maker's stamp. With that, the buffet cabinet was done. I hope you guys enjoyed this project. This was definitely a big learning experience for me. The finishing portion was particularly challenging with the staining, distressing, and just the sheer number of pieces I had to finish, then sand, finish, then sand, etc. Again, I have plans available for this on my website, so if you're interested in that, definitely go check that out. If you like this project, please give the video a thumbs up and leave me a comment letting me know what you'd like to see me build next. If you don't already, go ahead and get subscribed here and on my second channel. And last, if you want to support me more, use the Amazon affiliate links in the video description below. That's a free way for you to support my future builds. Thanks guys, and until next time, happy building.